time, need some. One more time. Okay. Jeff Rudolph, J E F F R U D O L P H, President and CEO of the California Science Center. Okay. And uh, where are we this morning, sir? We're in the uh, future Samuel Ocean Air and Space Center, a major addition to the California Science Center. And behind me, we're looking at the installation of the Space Shuttle's external tank and what will uh, soon be the only display in the world of a full authentic space shuttle system ready for launch. And um, just talk to me, obviously this is a, a major project that you guys have been working on for years. Just talk to me about the process. Yeah, actually the project dates back uh, over 30 years when we did the master plan for the new California Science Center. Uh, in 1992, we planned an air and space exhibit and said, what are big things we'd want in there? And said, someday they'll retire the space shuttles and we should try to get one and put it in a launch position. So that's, that's the dream of incredibly complex process. So. Um, can you talk about the, the tank itself? I know it's you know, about 65,000 pounds. Yeah. This, this external tank, uh, ET-94, is the only remaining flight-ready external tank in the world. This was the major component of the space shuttle that was expendable. It carried all the propellants for the main engines, and when they got into orbit, they would jettison it and it would burn up on re-entry. This one was the one not used of the 136 made. It weighs about 65,000 pounds now while empty. When it was a launch, it would be about 1.7 million pounds because of all the propellants. And, um, can you talk about maybe partners who have helped to make this project possible? Well, it's been so many people. Of course, our, our donors and supporters, uh, Linda Ocean and the Samuel Ocean Family Foundation, uh, most prominent among them, also Kent Cressa, uh, who's supporting our Space Gallery, Korean Air, and our Aviation Gallery, uh, the state of California, and then all the people working here on the project, our contractors, and, and specifically on what we're seeing behind us now, the whole team of um, engineers, form, former NASA employees, space shuttle engineers who worked, uh, we have folks here who have worked on every space shuttle mission from the first to the last who are helping us put this together. Um, it looks like you have a lot more to do after this. Uh, just talk about what's the next step. Yeah, well, once we get, the, nec the, the next immediate next step is in the next few weeks we will actually take the Space Shuttle Endeavour Orbiter and uh, move it to the site and lift it, similar to what we're doing now with the external tank, and attach it to this external tank, completing the Space Shuttle stack. Then we will uh, cover it all up, build scaffolding around it, plywood, and basically build a big box and protect it, and build the rest of the building above it and, and around it. Um, and then once the building is done in a couple of years, we still will install about a hundred other spacecraft and aircraft and about a hundred hands-on exhibits to talk about the science and engineering involved in flying through our atmosphere and into space and what we've learned. Uh, any idea on maybe when the entire building will be done? When, when would this be over to the public? In a few years now. Um, we, we don't have an exact date yet. Yeah, it's it's actually this is a process. It's an extremely complex process. Even even in the NASA facilities, this is the first time this has ever been done in a, outside of a NASA or Air Force facility. Uh, even there, it can take a long time to do this. It's it's an extremely um, a matter an inch makes a huge difference in these moves and we're dealing with huge pieces of equipment. Uh, we're doing it outside, which meant that wind makes a major difference when you've got something as big as this tank with the surface area it has hanging um, uh, uh, on a crane. Uh, any wind will start getting it swinging and then you can't control it and get it in these fine places like this. So um, we were worried about wind. We got the first half of the move done yesterday. Uh, overnight and then the morning the wind was picking up again uh, all the crew was pretty fatigued and tired and made the decision that it would be better to just um, take the day and come back tonight and get it done I think it was the right decision when you see it all going well tonight uh, is there anything else that you might want to add? Uh, 
I think just to say that we are extremely excited about this. We believe that the, the space shuttle stack, as I said, is a big part of the um, Samuel Ocean Air Space Center, but it's not all. There's, there's this almost doubles the size of the California Science Center, and it just dramatically increases our ability to uh, accomplish our mission of stimulating curiosity, inspire science, learning, and everybody. Okay, your name one more time. Jeff Rudolph, President and CEO of the California Science Center.